From the city to the plains, hospital leaders tell us what COVID-19 is doing inside their operations. It's not pretty. The reason why the virus is spreading, even though we see most Coloradans wearing masks in public. As we're being told to skip Thanksgiving, why is the governor letting the Broncos gather fans? And CU's extra year to find the next Ralphie is coming in pretty handy because the job candidates so far have been pretty ornery. Grab the reins, hold on. That is next. It's happening at this point. Uh, we knew that it would. Uh, you've got school districts throwing in the towel one after the other in the face of this latest COVID-19 surge. Just this afternoon, Jeffco, Dugco, Greeley, uh, Douglas County Schools announced they're going to go all remote after Thanksgiving break. This is the county where Republican commissioners resisted public health guidelines. That county is now being moved to more restrictive orange status. Jeffco Schools is sending 6 through 12 home starting Monday. Younger kids are going to phase back to learning at home by the end of the month. And Greeley Evans Schools just announced that they're going to go remote on Monday. Uh, this is a this is a pretty serious situation at this point. You have hospitals, both urban and rural in Colorado, issuing some clear warning signs about the month to come. Here's Nusha Roy. I'm quite frankly frightened about the next month or so. As of this afternoon, Denver Health was very close to their traditional capacity. Now we're full with non-COVID patients, and then we've had to add to that uh, a number of COVID patients. We've taken some beds that used to be for regular medical surgical care in a regular adult bed and converted those to ICU. It's also been challenging for the hospital to find more people to take care of patients because of cases across the country. So there aren't as many nurses available to step up and come do shifts. And quite honestly, I think we've taxed our current staff a lot. From Denver, we go to Lincoln Health in Hugo, Colorado. We stayed in touch with them throughout the pandemic and they are in a stressful ebb and flow. By eight or nine that tested positive um, and, and they were key people. Those staff members have been coming back and while the hospital has room today. There's about 100 more tests out and again, Lincoln County, fairly small population. That's mm -hmm. a lot for us. Overall, the Colorado Hospital Association said there is still capacity across the state, and many hospitals already had a plan in place from the spring to flip non-ICU units into ICU beds. And for Denver Health, it doesn't take long. There is no wait time. It's ready to go. The, the equipment is there. But this time around, improved treatment means there's a different trend. You're seeing more patients who have COVID that are being hospitalized staying in the medical floor so they're they're sick and they're sick enough to be in the hospital but they're not so sick that they're needing intensive care we know some of you are going to ask about the alternative care sites they are not open we just checked in with the state two hours ago it is important to keep this in mind this is not about looking at one or two hospitals in colorado it's about looking at the system as a whole across the state that is particularly important when it comes to transferring patients let's say from a stressed hospital to a hospital with more capacity a priority is going to be expanding capacity within hospitals that is something Denver Health is working on. They've got plans for it. It's going to be contingent on having enough staff to keep up with the demand. Ultimately, Kyle, the state is hoping that those alternative care sites are going to be a last resort. Mm -hmm. Yep, because you still need staff, to, whether you're converting a regular bed to an ICU bed, mm -hmm. you need ICU trained staff, you would need them someplace else. One thing that's been tough to pin down, Anusha, is these field hospitals or these alternative care sites. Mm -hmm. What are they, what are they going to be for? We've heard about them being like a step down for COVID patients patients in recovery. We've heard about them being for for other issues, non COVID related. Yes, yeah, so there are three, the Convention Center and two others in Pueblo and Westminster. And, you know, it is this evolving dynamic conversation. But if we get to the point that they're open, the state said at this point, the priority will be for recovering COVID patients. The sites in Pueblo and Westminster are also going to be set up to take in people from long term care facilities. And the whole idea is to take the pressure off of the hospitals, free up beds there. And that is both for COVID and non COVID patients, because because people are still falling sick with other things as well. Sure. All right. Anusha, thank you very much. Hospitalizations are past our spring peak and continue to climb like a 14er. 1,183 patients currently up 14 from yesterday. 
We were at 894 this time last week. Colorado's current test positivity rate is 12.4%. That indicates the virus is spreading faster than we can test for it and properly isolate people. Weekly positivity average is 11.7% and rising. Colorado just added a whopping 4,600 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday. We're doing a ton of testing. That's great. Still not enough to keep up. And wow, that case count. We're now averaging more than 3,600 new cases per day. So, so much for any hope of a plateau soon. I asked our point man on COVID coverage, Chris Vandeveen, if there's some way that Colorado is going to be able to avoid a statewide shutdown. Kyle, I'll put it this way. We're out of options here in the state of Colorado and most counties around the state. We've now entered the pretty please, 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 please phase of this where you're having counties, you're having state leaders saying, look, guys, you know what's coming if you don't start to do this at home. And they're finding that most of the spread is taking place inside small gatherings. So they're saying really stop those small gatherings. It is that the reason why Colorado is seeing such rapid spread, despite the fact that we've got a pretty good rate of mask wearing? Because people are wearing masks out and around, but then they're gathering in, in small places and not wearing masks? I think there's this idea that we have that all of this spread is taking place in places that we can see with our own eyes, like restaurants and other businesses. And the reality is from public health officials is that most of the spread is actually taking place inside places you don't see, in small gatherings inside homes homes where neighbors and families and other people who don't live together are getting together in small groups. And it's that rate of spread that's taking place inside those small groups that the state is now saying that is the primary concern, what we're seeing so much spread from right now. We know with so many Coloradans now going into the hospital that there are people who have a pretty good idea that I got somebody that I care about or at least know sick. And that's a pretty weighty thing to deal with. But there's also the reality, Chris, that the way the virus works, there's a very good chance you could have a mild case, be totally asymptomatic, and have no idea who you get sick. I had that exact conversation with Dr. Leon Kelly, who's the coroner down in El Paso County earlier today, and he said he's talking to people that were mildly symptomatic that now just get told that person that they were close to and possibly because of their actions are now in the hospital. And he describes those conversations as devastating for the person. Imagine your own family. Imagine your own circle of friends and you show up with a mild sore throat or a slight cough. You don't think it's that big of a deal. And yet you learn that potentially you were the reason why a loved one, a mother, a parent, a grandparent, a friend ended up in a hospital. That's happening right now in the state of Colorado because sometimes people believe that they're not sick enough to have COVID. Lots of people have mild symptoms. It doesn't mean that you can't spread the virus to somebody who's going to get a much worse case of it. That is just a bit of my extended conversation with Chris. The full discussion is up now on the next YouTube channel. We talked, among other things, about the inevitability of COVID getting into workplaces like ours and yours, and also how it's healthcare workers that might eventually force Colorado to take more drastic action. On a day when the governor reminded us that one in 100 Coloradans are estimated to be contagious with the virus, he headed into the Capitol, where Republican anti-maskers regularly ignore health guidelines. The Democratic governor was there to pitch his idea of a state-funded stimulus plan, pitching it to the legislators who had the option to release this money immediately. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger was also there. It's my money and I need it now! The economy can't wait for January. In a pitch to get more of your tax money back into your hands. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Democratic Governor Jared Polis and his budget director pitched their state-funded stimulus package to the six lawmakers who can release some of that money now before the legislature convenes in January. It needs to be spent quickly to maximize the benefit and leverage it over time. We went over some of the stimulus idea yesterday on Next. $105 million for restaurants. The governor has proposed allowing restaurants to keep the state's share of the sales tax for four months. That means they can keep 29 cents for every $10 spent. In a one-on-one -on -one interview after his pitch, the governor told me about grants he wants the state to pay for, two to $10,000, to help businesses struggling with capacity restrictions. That would include venues, bars, others that are either closed or under severe operating restrictions to help them pay rent, you know, if keep folks on board to the extent they're operating. He also wants to cover $4 million to pay for law enforcement body cameras. 
How does that stimulate the economy? It's a one-time investment, which is what uh, we, we mean by stimulus. Earlier this year, Polis signed into law new police accountability measures, including a requirement that all local law enforcement have body cameras. The law did not provide money for those body cameras. Local police departments won't need to cut back or lay people off just to be able to afford body cams. It really makes sure this is not an unfunded mandate, but the state is stepping up to help pay for body cams. In total, the governor's office believes this $1.3 billion stimulus package Package could not only keep businesses open, but create 10 to 15,000 new jobs for road and infrastructure projects the state would pay for. This is worth the sacrifice that it brings to, you know, redirect funds into this because of the potential for what it can do for our economy. For next, I'm Marshall Zellinger. The part of the governor's plan for restaurant relief and rental assistance would need to sign off by the six budget committee lawmakers this month or next month. The majority of the governor's stimulus package has to wait until the legislature comes back in January. So you've been asking, if we all have to stay inside as much as we can and limit our contact with people, why exactly are thousands of fans still being led into Mile High on Sunday? We took your question direct to the governor. Ralphie must have known. She ran for the exit before this hot mess express of a year got rolling. There is still no replacement for her at CU for one very important reason. Next. Tonight's next question comes to us from Jonathan. He wrote a really thoughtful email wondering why fans are still being allowed at Broncos games. Jonathan points out, you know, everyday Coloradans are being told by the state that we're not doing a good enough job at stopping the spread of the virus. We're the ones getting slapped with more restrictions. Meanwhile, Broncos insider Mike Kliss reported today that Broncos have been approved to continue having 5,700 fans at home games for the foreseeable future. So what gives? We took Jonathan's next question right to the governor. At the game... Uh, very low, low transmission, outdoors, spaced out. You're very unlikely to get it from other people or other parties. So it's kind of like going out to a restaurant. Biggest risk factor is if you're going with people from other households. If you're going with your family, with your household, family of four, family of two, family of six, whatever it is, uh, you're dining outside or spaced out inside, it's low to low medium risk. Uh, the bigger risk is if you're interacting with people from other households. Right now, one in 100 people are contagious with coronavirus 
in the Denver metro area. So let's hope that everybody who goes to the Broncos game is only going with folks in their household. I mean, here's the deal. A lot of you have asked about this. I think it's possible that allowing the Broncos to have pockets of fans can be squared with the science if you're telling people to go with their households. At the same time, it is a brutal look for Coloradans being told that they should not gather with people outside their household for something like Thanksgiving. So you ever find yourself in this pandemic wondering, what do we used to talk about? Well, a year ago today, we were talking about the abrupt retirement of a Colorado legend. Yesterday, CU made it seem like Ralphie's absence from football games at Folsom Field was a temporary situation. Then today, CU announced the retirement of Ralphie Five. It seems that Ralphie has been getting a little ornery, not responding to cues from her handlers. Temperament not ideal. Here I am today with the Quarren 20. Uh, Ralphie Five sure got out while the getting was good because uh, this year the Buffs are playing a shortened Pac-12 schedule. Live mascots are banned from the football games because of virus protocols. And on top of that, Boulder County announced new health restrictions just today that bans in-person fans for the remaining two home games. So Ralphie Five is, is off munching alfalfa somewhere and Ralphie Six has not yet been selected. CU's athletic department said they reviewed some contenders for the job and could not find an animal with the right temperament. At least they have an extra year to search. Mountain snow, foothill wind, sunshine, and 40s in the city. We get a little bit of a break tomorrow with another weather maker on the way. Temperatures have been trending cooler than average, but that's going to change on Friday, Friday the 13th. We have another weather system approaching that will bring four to seven inches of snow to the northern and central mountains. And southerly winds and southwest winds in the afternoon will push temperatures close to 60 in Denver. So tonight, fair skies and 20 degrees, lighter winds along the foothills. Tomorrow, upper 50s, lots of sun sunshine, a beautiful day. 20% chance of showers, a bit of wind on Saturday ahead of a nice warming trend. Temperatures in the upper 60s Tuesday, low 70s possible on Wednesday and Thursday. He waited anxiously to hear if his cabin had made it. He found a way to pass that stressful time. Hopefully this painting can heal a community that's been through such a terrible, terrible ordeal. His idea, next.
Saw a note in the Fort Morgan Times this week that I thought I should share with you. It was about money distributed to nonprofits out in rural Morgan County. Maybe you remember back in July, the next audience raised about $44,000 for those nonprofits. COVID-19 really hit that county hard. The newspaper article mentioned that next viewers provided about a third of the nonprofit funding that was given out by the United Way of Morgan County this year. A shout out to you guys in their newspaper. That's something you should be proud of. A guy named Christian Dorr felt like a lot of property owners in the Grand Lake area last month, just helpless. Waited for days to learn if his cabin near Columbine Lake was still standing. He found that painting was a good way to pass the time as the hours crept by with no news. So it turns out that Christian's cabin was okay. So was his painting. I believe that artwork has the properties of healing. Uh, my name is Christian Dorr and I am a fine artist. I've been painting for most of my life. So we have a cabin on Columbine Lake, which is on the doorstep of Rocky Mountain National Park. So we were very close to the fire when it was raging through. My neighbor said to me, oh, you're heading out. You've heard then. And I said, heard what? He said, There's a, we're, we're evacuating. So everybody was leaving. What happened was I got home and obviously we had the stressful experience of this fire raging through our community. And so instead of just constantly worrying about it, I got a canvas and I started pouring all my emotions onto the canvas. And I ended up creating this painting here that you can see behind me, which is called Native Healer. And I thought what a wonderful thing it would be to donate this painting to an auction to start an auction and give back to this community, which has been so very important to me as an artist. I would love to try and meet, meet our goal, and 100% of this will go to those people that have lost their homes and are going through this terrible time. Hopefully this painting can heal a community that's been through such a terrible, terrible ordeal. Christian, who lives in Centennial, shared that story through the lens of our photojournalist, Corky Scholl. Christian says he's going to split the money raised between the Columbine Lake Fire Fund and the Grand County Wildfire Emergency Fund. The auction ends on Sunday. Put a link to it in this story on the next section of 9news.com. It's the most Colorado thing we saw today. It might require looking twice. That and your feedback next.
The most Colorado thing we saw today will make sense when you see it. So, do you see it? Do you see it? Narissa from Longmont took this photo at Bar Lake State Park a few weeks ago. Yeah, that is totally Colorado State flag and logo right there in the middle. What does our state look like to you? Email your photos to next at 9news.com or tweet them using the hashtag HeyNext. A couple of teachers tonight, Tracy and Meredith among them, wrote in to take issue with the fact that I said that schools were giving up on in-person learning. That is, that's totally fair. No, we've given up on anything. People are making smart choices to keep kids and staff members safe. Should have used a, a different phrase there. Jim writes in to say for all that you guys have said about wearing masks, why weren't you and Chris, Chris Vanderveen, wearing masks during your segment? Jim, I was alone in this studio. Chris was alone in another part of our building, and anytime we move around, we've got these on. Quit the trolling, dude.